Welcome to Web Handling. My name is Dave Roysom. I am very excited to continue a new mini-series on human factors in web handling, a subject that is ripe for major reform, and I am happy to be at the front of it. In this fourth clip, we talk about something you think you already know about, and that is water faucets and alarm clocks. Time to see things with a fresh set of eyes just as a new operator of a web machine would. This is one of my longest Web 201 clips, but I want you to stick with it because our HMI control problems result precisely because we assume we understand the customer and their needs. So, before we move on to machine controls, which we will do in the very next clip, I promise, we need to understand how even the simplest of controls is not as simple as you would think. Confusion, trial and error, misunderstandings and mistakes abound. In the industrial world, this means increased waste, delay and customer complaints. The cost of control confusion is 200, 2000 or perhaps $20,000 an hour depending on your machine. Yet, the solution is nothing more than software, coupled with a bit of fresh thinking and homework. So, why is control confusion so rampant, and what can we do about it, is the subject of this and subsequent clips. So, here is a picture of what may be the most common faucet for hot and cold water. It is simple, and everyone understands it, right? Wrong. This faucet is only simple if you've had years of experience with it, and even then it is quite clumsy to operate. What makes the traditional faucet even remotely usable is that it employs conventions. By that I mean implicit rules of operation that are mostly standard for faucets that look similar to this one. So to understand controls, even for a simple faucet, one needs to spell out which conventions you can count on. Where conventions are not present, as in most web machine controls, we need to make each individual control obvious in what it does and how to operate it. Then, we must arrange all the separate controls in an obvious, or at least reasonable, order. So, returning to the faucet, let's spell out the conventions we can use with this simple faucet. First is that cold is on the right. This makes some sense, but only if you study operation and see that most humans are right-handed and that most water desires are either cold only or a mix of cold and hot. Two separate studies would be required to understand your customer, the operator, for this one convention on one control. So now the next convention might be the valves conform to the right hand thread convention or the righty tighty rule. In other words, Turning a valve clockwise as viewed from the front and looking at the top will tighten the valve and thus decrease flow. Wait a minute there, partner! While that might be the case for the cold right hand side with the twist valve shown here, faucets with the handles actually turn in the opposite direction. I had to double check this with my own faucets as I did not remember for sure which way they turned. Also, the hot valve on the left is usually opposite hand, but not always. So, in review, we can only count on one thing with the traditional faucet, and that is only after doing our two usage studies. That is, cold is on the right. We can say nothing about which direction to turn either valve to increase flow because there are no conventions that are standard across all two valve faucet controls. 
In this improved faucet design, we go a long way to removing some confusion as to the direction to turn the valves. Here, the design precludes turning the valve in the wrong direction to start operation because your hand would run into the wall in the attempt. Still, this improved design leaves one serious control problem. That is, the separation of the flow and temperature controls. The result is there is much chasing of valve openings to get the right mix and the right total flow. In web handling, it is not uncommon to see this egregious one knob does two thing problem in many areas. In web machine ovens, for example, temperature changes tension in draw controlled sections. In primitive lay on roll winder designs, we may have tension affect nip. So, can we solve the separation of mix and flow problems simultaneously? In this lovely design, we solve many problems. First, we have intuitive flow controls. Up is higher is more flow. Second, cold is still on the right. But to not make any assumptions, we add a very intuitive color-coded icon. Third, we have independent flow and temperature adjustments. However, we are going to add a fourth feature that has not been discussed yet. That is, all other faucets were two-handed. Here, we can do everything with either the left hand or the right hand. If you study your customer, as I hope you do, you will find that while a sink and a shower might seem to have similar needs, there is one very key difference. That is, on showers we seldom want to change temperature, and then by only a very small amount. This is totally different than sinks, where you might want a drink of cold water in the morning and then hot water for washing the evening dishes. Both of these valves shown here sort of solve the temperature problem. However, setting the temperature on the left valve is not obvious. However, while the temperature on the right valve is straightforward, the valve is on the wrong side. Remember, our customer, temperature is seldom adjusted in showers. What is most important and thus needs to be on the right side is the flow control. We will let you search and find your ideal faucet controls, but we will move on to one more example consumer appliance to show how poor controls are laid out. Industrial controls are much, much worse. Yet, as we will see, simple control systems are really quite simple once you see good examples that you can emulate. I live the life of a road warrior. Thus, I need to be able to operate hotel alarm clocks to make sure that I get up early enough to make my flight. Before you say, why not just use your iPhone? Well, I do, but that is not good enough because there is a chance of missetting it, such as getting the AM PM selection wrong or any other number of failure modes. Thus, I always set two alarms iPhone and hotel alarm clock. The problem is, however, I can't figure out how to run at least 5% of the clocks, even with as much or more experience than most of you would have. Shown here is one such 20 button beauty that has eluded me for years. However, even the seemingly simple one on the right has a problem. It is not simple. It requires a 20-button remote to operate. Worse yet for hotels and their customers are that remotes are not very reliable and are always getting lost. So, is there a simple solution? You bet there is. And here is just one example. This QB time has only one button knob. It is rock-solid simple to operate. 
push knob down to set or disarm alarm, and the state is clearly shown with the display icon. Turn the knob to adjust time. As a bonus, the adjustment is nonlinear. In other words, the rate of change increases as you continue to turn. And as another very thoughtful bonus, this tiny fist-sized device has two AC sockets and two USB charging hubs. Wait a minute, you say. I need more features. I need the radio so I can wake up to music, and I need other goodies too. No problem. Cubitime has many more feature-laden devices, but all have the same rock-solid and intuitive operation. Before we summarize, I want to drive home the point that consumer control confusion is rampant. It is not just faucets and hotel alarm clocks. Here's an example of my Ford F-150 truck. Digital clocks have been on cars and trucks for nearly 30 years, yet the control designers still haven't got it figured out. Let us, for example, try to reset the clock when daylight savings time changes or you pass into a new time zone when driving. First, we easily locate what is probably the clock set button labeled CLK. I forget whether this is a single press or press and hold, but we will get that with a bit of trial and error. Next, we will try and change the hours and minutes. Our first guess would be the two rocker switches between the clock and the clock set button. The left one must do the hours, and the right one must do minutes. Wrong. Hours and minutes are done by the horizontal rockers on the opposite corner of the control panel. My wife's new Mercedes clock is even worse. While it has GPS, telephone, and internet connections, and even an email address, the clock won't reset itself. So, rather than go into the internet to figure out how to change the time, we just ask the garage to do it on the next time we have it in for an oil change. I hope I've made it quite clear with these examples of how needlessly confusing consumer controls are. Lots of trial and error and frustration. Sometimes, often, we just give up, as visitors to my home do when they try and turn on the TV. Our web machine controls are often as bad or even worse. The simplest modern winder may have hundreds of knobs, dials, switches, numbers, pages, and other control and display elements. Take heart, however. We can do much, much better and at very little extra cost. In fact, the cost is mostly doing a bit of homework. First is to study HMI controls, as we will outline in the next clips. Then, study how newer operators actually use your controls. You can time how long it takes to make a selection. If it takes much more than a second or two, we know we have opportunities. Ask them what a button does or how they would do some operation. Try a different layout. Reiterate. Our goal is to make the controls as intuitive and comfortable as an automotive steering wheel. Our goal is to make more money by avoiding confusion at $200, $2,000, or even $20,000 per hour. Thank you so very much for watching this module in my plant practical video series. Stay tuned for the next clip where we will begin to outline our best practices of HMI controls for web machines. Be sure to like and share. See you next time.